No. Are we in? We are live. Right, say it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever yes. you are watching from in the world. <laughs> it is Anthony and Clay back, back from a very big hiatus on the uh, on, on the Surf Hacks Live. So we are, we're, we're back tonight. We're talking about the the trip that we recently did to the Mentawis. It was amazing fun. Lots of waves. Clay hasn't surfed since. No. Uh, <laughs> It was too good. It's surfed out. And you might see in the background, actually, there is, there is a board bag that's being yeah. filled up because Clay is off on another, on a, another trip. Um, another, another trip. Half Pat from Nicaragua. But before we go there, let's, let's talk about our trip to the Mental Eyes. Yeah, we, we, so we've, we've purposely been avoiding having this conversation because I've got my thoughts around it. It was the first time that I'd ever been away on a proper, proper trip. I was there as, as Clay's assistant coach sort of sitting down the line, basically cheering people on, was, was I, I feel that my role was. But um, look, let us know in the comments uh, if, if you can hear us. Okay, we got, we, got a, we got a thumbs up there. Just just let us know in the comments. Try to make sure that we are coming through on all channels. I might have a bit of a problem earlier on going live on the with, within the Facebook. So I'm just trying to see if we are live on there. But it's at the moment, it's not showing me anything. But I'm gonna so we're live on YouTube. No, no, we are. I can see. Look, there is there is us on my phone. So at least I know that we are. We, we're live across all kicking, channels. Kicking goals. Green Planet Surfer, Lucky Lucky Man, Graham, Graham Marsden. You're live on YouTube. Perfect. We're we're live whereabouts we need to be. So we so I spent two weeks in in the Mentawis. Clay spent four weeks in the Mentawis. I was replaced uh, with by somebody else halfway through because I had to come back. Uh, to the land down under to do uh, some to do some other things. I'm interested. Okay, from from your perception, who surfed mm. the most in week one? Who surfed the most in who week one? Surfed the most, most water time, out of guests and us. Who surfed the most in week one? Um, well, if if we're gonna, there's a guy called Pete. Who He'd surfed a lot. Yeah, who okay. literally so only came out of the water I'd to sleep. Probably say I came in a close second to Pete. Yeah. Who surfed the most in week two? Um, Pete again. <laughs> All right, so Pete was there for two weeks. I came a close second. So are we talking about me and you here? Well, I surfed my brains out. Yeah, you, you did. I literally surfed myself into a coma that by 7.30 every night I had to go to bed. It was pretty useless. And I was useless after seven. It was, it was phenomenal. All right, we get, uh, I'm just going to bring a few people up while everyone's jumping on. We've got Craig Raffin. Let's see. Hi from Sunny Coast. Nice. Tina Greenwood, yes. I'm assuming that was one of the questions asked before. All good on YouTube. Pete. <laughs> Bjorn. Bjorn, hey. Bjorn. So, so, so Bjorn. Hello, the, Bjorn. So, so, so Bjorn. Uh, nope, that way there. So Bjorn there. Ah, hang on a minute. Bjorn there. Bjorn there had... So not only not only does, does Bjorn have the best stories about surf trips that he used to go on uh, back in his back in his youth, he he also they so he, he travelled over with his family so so with his his from, wife Abby and, and and three kids from Norway for the start of their trip the start of their trip they went to get on the plane and it was a tiny weeny little plane and they wouldn't take his boards on so he flew on the surf trip of a lifetime all the way out to Macaroni's and had no boards with him. But luckily, there are some amazing boards that you can hire at Macaroni's. But yeah, that... Also, I mean, imagine took him about it. three days to get there. Yeah. And he had three kids and a wife. Like, the guy's an absolute legend. I don't know how he pulled that off. And he yeah. asked his wife to stay an extra week. <laughs> so... Yeah, so, so he ended up staying for three weeks, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Bjorn and the family ended up staying for, for, for three weeks. And... Um, I just, just imagine though, so you, you're going on a surf trip and you start off a surf trip by not having any boards. You're going on a surf trip and your boards have to be left behind. I, I would freak out. I took six boards with me and I, I almost felt like I wish I had more because th there's so many good waves that we rode that I just wanted to try a variety of everything and just see yeah. how they all went. And it's such a good testing ground for, for, for boards. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So... So, like, Bjorn's such, such a great guy as well. I've, I'm trying to find a medical conference so I can tell him that he's got to come down to Australia so he can come down and, 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 and hang out down here. But, uh, look, let's, let's jump into the, some of the footage that, we, that, that we've got. Now, we had a ton of footage. What I've done is I've stripped out pretty much just mine and Clay's wave so that you get a view from uh, an expert's 
perspective and then a view from the, your, your intermediate perspective as well. We're going to talk through we're going to talk through going on surf trips. We'll, we'll have a conversation around my experience on the surf trip. The first time I've ever tar- that was the first time I've ever surfed in these sorts of these sorts of waves and this type of these type of uh, conditions. I'm going to say conditions or situations, uh, locations. So yeah, there was an interesting journey that I went through as an intermediate I also on, the, on, on the trip. There's an interesting journey that the the customer who arrives it goes through because. Day one, as opposed to day seven, when they're up on day one, they're, they're, they're an absolute mess. Mm. But then you kind of, you calm them down, you yeah. build up their confidence, and by the time when they're leaving on day seven, they're taking on like double overhead waves on a reef and trying to get barreled and yeah. do turns. Yeah. So it, it's this full roller coaster that they go through, and it's, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's scary. It's yeah. like it's definitely scary. There's highs, there's lows. Yeah. You catch the best wave of your life. You get flogged on the reef. You think you're gonna you die. Catch the best wave of your life and the worst wave, or yeah. the worst experience of your life. All in like ten minutes. It's it's yeah, one of the best places. Like, yeah. So um, for those of you that that are are new here that haven't seen us before, I'm just gonna bring up very quickly the the laptop. We have got the, the app whereabouts you can access all of the online surf coaching programs. There's some free programs in there as well. So you can see on the screen there, if you head to onbe.co, if you haven't already done so, you can sign up and you get a, a seven-day free trial where you get access to, to the entire Ombi library for, for seven days. See if you, to see if you like it, I can, I can guarantee you that, that you will. There's a stack of training in there. Can I jump in on that, yeah. Ant? So if there's, there's, there's three things that I've learned. All right, first of all, you have to know what is it that you're supposed to be doing. So if it's chess, it's the rules of a game. If it's golf, it's like how to play, right? So you need to know what to do. Okay, I feel like you've suddenly gone off on a tangent. So just bring this back in. Th- this is just the programs that you advertise. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so <laughs> you first need an education. And that's part of what we're providing here is an education. Yeah. Just because you might know something doesn't mean that you can do it. You have to go out in the water, make the mistakes, and then mm. you have to learn how to self-correct. Yeah. Okay, so there's, there's a self-correction learning phase that you have to go through. In other words, you have to suck yeah. initially. Then when you figure it out, all right, you have to put the time in. If you don't put the time in, if you don't use it, you lose it. And then you're going to have to go and figure it out again and put the time in again. Yeah. So um, it's this weird thing. Once you understand it, you've got to get it wrong, figure it out, put the time in, and then you will be okay at it yeah all right you, you'll have a an understanding where things are achievable they make sense and uh you'll you'll be proficient at it yeah now i have made a little note here which was something which which we had a discussion about uh in the first week which we might loop back to in a little while but let's okay. let's bring up some footage because that's what people want to see people want to see surfing let's see what your notes were <laughs> i've written in he's uh, got little cheat notes it's so I, unfair I have, i've got I've got like a little reporter's notepad tonight. So I, I, feel like, I, 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 feel, I feel like a journalist. I've da, 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 da. got a memory like a sieve. You put stuff in and just it all just like runs out. And here, Mr. I remember everything taking notes. It makes me feel... Well, that's how I remember everything. I take notes. With, uh, I, I bought a brand new pencil just to just share with you. bought a brand new pencil today. One of those, one of those real fancy, fancy ones. It's got a little sharpener thing on the top. Anyway, let's go into yeah. some, uh, some videos. Some waves. Let's, let's, go, let's go for, I think that this... This is one of your... Okay, this is, so here we go. So we're going to show away from me. This is, this is from the very first surf that we had. Now, when we arrived, when we arrived on the Friday, everybody was, was really tired, but we went out in the water to just blow off the cobwebs. Literally um, just to wash the, the travel dirt off us. Yeah. And just to kind of get rid of all the fear and anxiety and just to see what it is. Yeah, but when, but when, when we arrived... It wasn't the best of conditions. There was a bit of a wave, but there was a storm on its way in. Uh, so when, when we arrived on the Friday, we had this surf in the afternoon. Saturday, we could not surf. You couldn't even go outside. If you'd go outside, you would have, yeah. you would have, the rain was that powerful. It made holes in you. It was like bullets. So anyway, let's play the wave. So this is, this is me. This was the only time in the whole trip that I never wore a helmet. Probably should have worn a helmet on the first day that you go over a reef, to be honest. So that was... Uh, that was my first first wave and, and over, over reef. If, if, if we had well, to give some, um, I'm trying to find the right word here. 
So this is slightly kind of messy, cross offshore. Yep. Not a great swell. Yep. A little bit lumpy. But still, how surfable is it, and how good is it? I was. It was so much fun. Like so much, so so much fun. But I will tell you now, everything in my head was was <laughs> was really worried about the fact that there was a reef underneath me. So this is my. Do you have any of the underwater stuff that you filmed? Not on the not oh, not, not, not on the right here tonight. We'll, we'll have to do that on the next live. So so what that you what you don't see here is the water clarity. Yeah. It is almost like air clarity. Right. So you take off on a wave and you just see what looks like really shallow coral. Heads. I am just going to put this up. Nice one, Anne. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Um, yeah, the water clarity is, is next level, and it's um, it it initially freaks you out because it looks so damn shallow. Yeah, so you, you, st you stand up and then all of a sudden, I would try to not think about the reef, but then the reef was kind of just going, hello, I'm here. <laughs> and it started gurgling underneath me and I could see it. And then I, then I started freaking out a little bit, was worried about doing turns because I thought I was going to hit it. So this, I, I'm trying to explain this for you so that you can experience the, I suppose, the psychological journey that, that I went well, through. I think, I think when people see endo and reef breaks, they, they see it from the beach perspective looking at the wave. Yeah. And they're like, wow, that wave is perfect. If I can get that wave, I will rip it to shreds. Yeah. Like I will be the best surfer, the best version of myself if I go there. But then what you experience happens with that, the paddling in is like, wow, I can, all I see is reef. Yeah. Like you don't even see the bottom of the wave. You just see like, coral heads and it freaks them out and then yeah just tell, yeah, them, so tell it, them how you felt yeah for me I think so one of the things that that I, I suppose that I was really struggling with from a from a thoughts point of view was it took us three days so from Australia it took us three days to get there yeah a day of that is spent traveling on a boat out to this island in the middle of nowhere and all I'm thinking is if I fall off and because because I hadn't fallen off the first time out there over that reef I hadn't fallen off yet so I didn't know what would happen when I fell off it's completely unknown to me and all I was thinking inside my head was if I go across the reef what happens if I get really badly cut open we're miles away from anywhere I'm not going to get any medical treatment yeah um, it will be a really bad start to, to the trip the problem was that then made me really jittery on every single wave that I went for I then started going for the smaller ones because I thought, well, at least if I catch the smaller ones, if I do get rolled over the reef, it, it wouldn't be so bad. But I realised very quick in that first afternoon, so I wore booties as well the, the entire time, reef shoes. And I'm glad that I did. Otherwise, m my feet would definitely be a different size right now because uh, I ended up on the reef a fair bit. But those smaller waves... That was when I realised very, very they quickly. They are lethal. Yeah. You do not catch small waves. And I, and I think on, the, on that first afternoon, I, I realised that. And I came over to you and I said, I think we, I'm just going to go in. Because I've now realised that these small waves are actually going to get me cut up real yeah. bad, really fast. So on a reef break, everyone has the misconception that the small waves look nicer. Yeah. Um, However, the bigger waves are nicer purely because of the fact they break in deeper water. And if you do fall, you, you've got this buffer of deeper water. Mm. Also, the bigger waves, because they break in deeper water, they run slower, which means you've got more time. The, the smaller waves, it's a smaller circle, which means they peel off faster and they generally run away from you. Yeah. Um, so I am petrified of small waves on a reef. <laughs> Big waves, bring them on, no worries. Mm. But then, but the, but then it's, it, it's, it's that really weird mindset around it because a big wave, you think, well, okay, big wave, I'm going to get absolutely slammed by it. I might get held underneath the water for ages. So, you've, so you think that about the big waves, but then you've got this whole thing of, well, if I catch a small wave, then I'm going to get cut up on the reef. And then you end up in this bit of a conundrum of, well, what wave do I actually go for? Yeah. Um, so the, there's a definite sort of outside spot and an inside spot. Yeah. And we, we, we'll, we'll see that in one of the videos yeah. in a bit. But... Here's the thing, with how you felt and the indecisiveness, all the people sitting kind of on the inside who wanted those smaller waves, they've all got this nervous energy that you can feel. Yes, it's, it's like a panic in the water. Correct. And then 
when you did let her go out to the back, mm. there's an air of confidence. Yeah. And those guys have the first pick and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going or you go. Yeah. And there's, there's a much better sort of relaxed um, vibe at the top of the reef where the people who are confident are sitting there catching the best waves. And if you do go to the top, you, you kind of, when you pick up on that confidence, it's almost like you start making better decisions, you start catching better waves, and henceforth you start surfing better. Yeah. But when you start catching the smaller ones, you start making bad decisions, you end up on the reef, um, life's not good there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to find one of you earlier on in the trip. Um, yeah, just Johnny Crank a few and just show a few people. Yeah. Right, let's just bring up the iPad. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just play for a whole bunch of them. If anybody's got any questions, chuck them in the, uh, chuck them in the comments there. Oh, man, it is so nice. much fun. A slightly big one. So I think that this was... So on the Saturday, we, we couldn't surf. Sunday evening, we could. So I think this was the Monday. So yeah. I think this was a Monday where, where there was a good swell that was just, just starting to come in. Yeah, look, you can... You can, you, you, you can. Oh, okay, so this... Hang on, oh, sorry. I was meant to press pause. So this was, this was way, way. So, so you were saying just a moment ago about the difference in, in whereabouts people sit. So way, way was sitting super deep here. Yeah. And it was like anybody that took off there, so that's, that's you had to know how to get into a battle. Let's explain who way, way is. He is one of the guys that runs the resort. He's yeah. kind of like um, public relations. Public officer. relations, showman, surf coach. Musician. <laughs> he, he actually won Mr. Mentor Wise. Like he's, yeah. he's yeah, anyhow, long story. He still wears a sash and everything. Mr. Mentawa. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a legend of a, of a personality. Anyhow, um, most people sit kind of that way, about oh, 10, 20 meters. Yep, you're going to see Way, way is way, way, way up the reef over here. Uh, and that's not why it's called way, way, because he sits way, way up the reef. He's, that's, he's just called way, way. So this it wasn't big enough to barrel. And the swell direction wasn't great. So you can see when he does pull in, if that was the right swell direction, it wouldn't have shut and it would be a lot more makeable. Now, round about there, right, the wave slows down and starts to wrap. So it breaks really fast, really fast, really fast. And then it kind of hits this corner where it wraps and then runs that way. Mm. So you can see it's someone else whoop, over the falls. I think you jump on it then. Ah, then yeah. I'll, I'll pick it up. And then, yeah, just kind of throw a couple little turns down. So, so on this day here, I started to get pretty comfortable with, 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 this, with this sort of size wave taking off over the reef. And, and then I started to realise, wow, this is super fun. How good is it? First, yeah. day, I, first day, I was crapping my pants. Then, then I put a helmet on and then we tried to figure it out on the, when we surfed on the Sunday. And then on the Monday, I kind of feel like I've, I was starting to find my groove. My, my groove. Definitely not my flow, but I was starting to find my groove. I started to, to feel more comfortable in, those, in the slightly, slightly bigger so, waves. So I'm, I'm interested. What, is it fear of the future, fear of the reef? Fear like, of the reef. Like fear of the reef. You just didn't want to get cut. Didn't want to get cut. Is that, is that it? So you, you're just playing, much. It, playing it safe and just... Yeah, well, I didn't want to get rolled across the reef and sliced up. That was, I, I've, got, I've got no issue with, with falling off under the water. Okay, I can so, hold my so breath for long let's enough. get a wave of yours up. All right, here we go. And it's been just put in the firing line. Let's, let's anyway. choose. I'm, I'm trying to find one where I've got the helmet on. Right, go, back, so no. go back here. I think it's a helmet on. Yeah. Yep, yeah, got the helmet on here. Okay, so you got extra protection. Got extra protection. Okay. I mean, noggin. And I folded myself in half. Okay, so so here's what I'm seeing compared to when you normally surf. So, the day before we left to come to go to Macaroni's, we were surfing a couple of lefts at Palmy. Yeah. You told me that on the lefts you were able to do figure eights right back into the foam. Yep. Okay. And you're like, this is amazing. I'm, I'm like, I'm ready for Macas. <laughs> that was at, at Waste Harp, Palm Beach, yep. Grovely. Northeast, um, but you're on point and you're surfing good, okay? But when you're over here, I did, I did so much, 
every time I was down in Melbourne, I would go in the wave pool and I, I refused, I refused to surf the right-handers down at the wave pool because up here on the Gold Coast, we, we, we hardly ever get any lefts uh, unless you get some sort of weird swell come in. Um, and so every time I went down to the wave pool, I only surfed lefts in preparation to go two macaronis surfing left. Oh, there's drawing on the, on the iPad. Okay, so when we surf, that figure eight would be a flow line. Yeah. Okay, let's call it that. So you, you come off the bottom, and then you, you almost go, and you do like sort of a quarter turn, and you go flat. Are you, are you seeing that? So if you look, when you come off the bottom, all right, see there, it's cut short. Mm -hmm. But if you had have just held that and gone back there, you, you could have found that flow. So... What I'm alluding to here is because you just wanted to go to the safety of the end of the wave, yep. you end up doing quarter turns. The surfing starts looking a little bit more erratic. Um, and then it's a bit sort of stop-start. But what happened, there, there's a turning point. There was a turning point. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> this wave here wasn't my turning point. <laughs> do you remember me calling out the back and going, Ant, come here. And yeah. I called you out the back and I said... I pretended I had water in my ears, catch, I think, first of all. What? I can't hear you. Catch what? this wave. And it was a much bigger wave out yep. the back. Y you came back beaming. What happened? What? I, I was on the back. I didn't see it. Just what happened on that particular wave? Well, I think it was the fact that I made it. I didn't, I didn't back myself to go for the bigger ones and make the drop. I suppose, for, for, for me, one, once I'm up and riding... I feel a little bit more safe, but it's that initial bit of the takeoff. I was taken off on my backhand and a bigger wave than normal. And so I'm always worried about getting, let me take this up full screen. I'm, I'm always worried about getting pitched over the falls as I'm taking off on my backhand because on my forehand, I can get up really fast. On my backhand, I feel a little bit clunky. Yep. And I think the fact that I went for it and I made it and then just felt that power of the wave going down. And then when, when I was doing it, I was feeling a different power in the wave than, well, than what maybe I that, that okay, I'd so, felt before. So I'm interested. So I was feeling something. On the small waves, you felt like you had to chase it. But on the bigger one, you could just sit yeah, yeah, into it and you can just wait. And you'd hit it yeah. and, and then it would just suck up again and it would just keep giving and keep giving. Yeah. So... It, it's a weird thing, but when you, once you've caught that big one, you, you start to tune into, like, hang on, that, that's a whole other level of better surfing. Yeah. Um, in which case, you just want another one and another one and another one. Yeah. Um, how, how long do you reckon it took you to be comfortable enough to put yourself in a position to feel that? Okay. Was it, was it how many sessions? Was it three days? Three days. Three days. Three days. I, I, so I would say three days. So that's not from the Friday. That's from... Three days of surfing. That's, yeah, three days of surfing. So we didn't really get any proper... So we surfed Sunday evening, which I still feel was kind of... Because uh, it, it was still all, all over the place because of the storm. So we really started surfing properly on Monday. So on Monday, the swell started to come in. Tuesday, the swell got good. Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, the swell just went like... Bonkers. Like, it was crazy. And then it started to drop off a day after that. And that, as it started to drop off, that's when I was just starting to go, okay, I feel comfortable now. Yeah. Which is a bit of a bum. Could have got comfortable on the Wednesday. And then uh, I would have probably taken a few of the, uh, few of the bigger ones. But look, I, I took on waves that I feel were, were, they weren't necessarily bigger than anything that I've ridden, but considering the circumstances in which they were happening. Okay. This is... Yeah. So, go, no, no, go. I just tweaked out, had a brain fart. Um, my shorts. When you're in the water paddling in, okay, please try to explain to the viewers that in reality it feels twice as big. It's and massive. Then, and then when you look at the video, you go, what? Is that it? It honestly yeah. feels, when it's looming oh, yeah. up <laughs> and in person, you talk, I'm find it feels twice as Where big. Is Where is it? Where is it? So, this one. All right. Yeah. This, this, this one. So just so this is this is now gonna gonna, gonna talk to 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 what Clay is now talking about. So this you may have seen this video because because we did post it. Clay's barrel that he got that everyone went crazy for. So here we go. 
Let me, let me play it. So Clay's barrel drops straight into it. Got barrel. <laughs> Comes out, super excited. Kapow, kapow. <laughs> and then does a little turny thingy at, at, at the end. However, however, the reason why I want to draw attention to this is because I bet you know, right now, there's a lot of people watching this who are, are, who are intermediate surfers. If you're, if you're a beginner, you may think, well, that's really scary. But a lot of intermediates that go, yeah, that looks... That looks so fun. That looks really fun. That looks really amazing. Now, I was sort of just paddling over the shoulder at this point here when Clay was in the barrel deep like that. So I was, I was just off of camera there. Now. <laughs> now. On video, on, on this video here, that you're now, that, that there, that, that video there that you're now watching, that looks, that looks fun. That looks like, yeah, I'd love to get one of those. When I was paddling over that shoulder and I was looking at Clay inside the barrel, all that was going through my brain is I want nothing at all to do with one of that. As much as I would love to have got barreled uh, on, on, on my backhand, it was the sound, the energy in the water, just a <laughs> seeing you inside it, watching the turbulence of you, like holding onto that. It, it was a bit overwhelming for me. I was, it was cool to see it, but I was just like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to get inside one of those. But on video, yeah. On video, it looks kind it of looks small. <laughs> it kind of looks kind of looks quite nice and playful. So it's 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 a really weird it's a really weird thing to see. And, and whenever I watch any of the videos back of me surfing, <laughs> I always think when I was on that wave, it felt way 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 different. It felt bigger. I felt like my turn was better. I felt like I threw more spray. I felt like I was doing the right thing. I suppose if you look at that, it, it, it's kind of just overhead. Maybe it was a bit bigger on the takeoff. But honestly, when you're lying down, those lines are coming at you. It, it does feel intimidating. Yeah. Um, I, I get that. So, Top ass so, dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, on the bigger waves that you did catch on the trip, yeah. did you ever bounce off the bottom on a big wave? Did I ever bounce off the bottom? Did you ever touch the bottom? when you caught a set wave? Yes or no? No, Good. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. How, however, I think- It was scary. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was scary. I didn't fall on the takeoff once. So maybe I, wasn't, maybe I wasn't pushing myself hard enough. I didn't fall on the takeoff once. That was one of the places where I was really worried about hitting, was, was on the takeoff, getting caught in the lip and thrown over. Then I feel like I might have hit the reef. But, but I didn't hit the reef in all the times that I did fall off, but I never fell off on that takeoff. And that's what was freaking me out so much. Some of the smaller waves that you got, did you hit the reef? Yep. Well, I ended up stood up half the time on the reef. I, I, I made a couple of rookie mistakes. I would look very kook mistakes, I'll be completely honest. And... <laughs> Ended up catching, so yeah, it was, it was always on the small ones. There was a, one small one that I caught where it, it just broke. Doom. So And rather than jump off into the foam, I, I rode I it. I didn't wear booties the, the entire trip. I know. And, oh. I, and I didn't wear a helmet the entire trip. However, I never caught small waves the entire trip. Mm. That, that's one thing I did not do. I like, I'm, I'm scared, I'm getting out, it's too small. Yeah. So that, like, I, I know from previous, previous experiences that um, whenever I caught a small wave, it ended bad for me. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that got barreled for me on the backhand was, was my leash. <laughs> I tried. Towards the end of the trip, Claire was going, you've got to try to. And it, it got a little bit smaller. And I, I did try to get into that, that pig dog stance, but I never actually made it inside a barrel. But um, just a quick couple of things. I'll pull them up here. If I look down on my backside, so I think that this um, relates to what I was trying to explain then. But I think, uh, yeah. David's got it. If I look down at my backside, I get pitched. It's totally yeah. different from front side. And I 100% well, agree well, with you. Well, it makes sense because when you're paddling in, if you look down, you've got to, sometimes people bend their back. Let me, let me get that out of the way, mate. So if you bend your back, you, you almost start to do, do a hip hinge. And then, then you haven't got that balance. So you, you want to look where you want to go. And then even if you do kind of hip hinge, you just get more speed. 
Yeah. So if you're front hunting that barrel, it makes a massive difference. Yeah. So so what one one thing that's that, that we use a lot within within the Ombi training is is the, is the Bosu ball, and we discovered through watching a lot of footage of me trying to surf barrels at the wave pool backhand was that I had this habit of of um, grabbing was, was as I was going down my, my, my knees would point forwards and so then I'd get flipped this way so we actually got got the BOSU and got me used to getting down onto the BOSU and so I would have a wall so I'd lean against it but getting to this position here on the BOSU ball which I found really helpful uh, when I was out in Maccas obviously not, <laughs> not so, so helpful that I got barreled so Okay, let's, let's put some perspective to this then. Yeah, mental wise can be a bit scary. Yeah. All right. Um, it's got a lot more power than you anticipate. It's got more push. But there are some user friendly waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Let's, let's talk about that right. And fell in love with this particular wave. Hang on a minute. Before we bring it up, before we bring it up, because I'm going to go off on the right tangent when we go into this one here. Pete, uh, the disparity between the size of the wave when seen POV is 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 a far uh, from afar is insane. Nothing captures the first person. So yeah, hundred hundred percent. You 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 see these. And I, I think I, I think it's the energy, because when it yeah. comes, it almost goes below sea level, and it's just like whoa. Oh man, you said something really. I think it was kind of like next level Yoda Yoda shit in the in the in the, in the, in the water. You went, did you feel that? Yes. And I was like, what? He okay. Said, I could I could feel the reef starting to shake. And I was like, you're having a laugh. I can't feel the reef shaking. And but, true enough, there was some. But yeah. And then all of a sudden, a set came through. And I was just like, that's so, like you've got really okay, sensitive so, feet. It's because you didn't have booties on. No, it, it's kind of like it's quiet. It's quiet. It's quiet. And then. It, it almost starts just like, it feels like a, a suck back and a rumble and you can just feel energy. I can. You, you can. All right. You're on your and own And then there. guaranteed, you're just, you're just waiting and you're paddling over and then you just pick your right one and you turn and you go. And um, when that set came through that I got barreled, I felt that. Like, it was like... Brrr. Yeah. So, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe it, it's a frequency and you can feel that frequency, like a, a vibration, but... Anyway, I, I was maybe more tuned in. You, you were de definitely uh, way more tuned in. Yeah. Um, well, oh, I had something in my head that I was going to say then. Uh, we're going to show the right hander, then we're going to loop back to, to some of what we've noticed with, with people going on surf trips like this that are absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, but yeah, there was, a, there was a few things that, that came up, which I think... Some of the stuff that came up is like, how many people bought the wrong boards? Especially even yep. after we did, we did like a whole thing. Yep. So what happens on a trip? People take the, their favorite board from home that they're comfortable riding, maybe waist to shoulder high waves. Yeah. And then that real comfortable board probably isn't designed to handle speed. And when they catch a really great wave at Macaroni's, mm. they're, they're just out of control because yeah. the board's going too fast, they can't turn it, they can't parry the rail in. And um, generally when we put people on their slightly bigger board or their step up, they get the wave easier. So that anxiety of paddling in goes. Yeah. Because it's a round tail, they can actually bury the rail and start to enjoy surfing yeah. the, the pocket a bit more. Uh, yeah, this, this is that little right that we surfed, which is it's, it's such a fun little wave. This 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 wave, I absolutely loved it. I've I've definitely uh, discovered from surfing uh, over in the Mentawis that I'm definitely a right hand person, not a not a not a left hand person. This this wave was uh, is my favourite. We had days that were just glossy. I mean, look at this. There's no one else out except for just us. It's overhead. <laughs> it was the the interesting thing with this wave is the 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 takeoff for it was was nice and easy. You just you uh, like the the wave would come. Glided. It didn't like it didn't suddenly jack up on you. You just glided, glowed, glided, glided, glowed, glowed, glowed wh wh whatever it is. Yeah, Oreo biscuit, biscuited, <laughs> bis bis biscuited. I'm gonna put my my teeth back in again. The yeah. Oreo biscuited in. And you stood up and you went, and then it looked like it was going to close out. So down the line, it looked like it was going to close out, and it wouldn't. And the whole thing would just suddenly jet. So you went for like a nice, easy takeoff. To all of a sudden, this thing just going, 
It looked like it was gonna. It looked like it was gonna devour you, and but it just created. So it, it just created this really nice big face to be able to just do these amazing turns on, and on the first day I, I went out there, I had a uh, 360 cam on my helmet, and uh, I didn't get to surf very much because unfortunately, the I tried to duck dive a wave and the 360 cam got knocked off, and then I spent an hour and a half swimming around with a snorkel trying to find the 360 camera on the reef. And then the next day we went, I went out on the um, mid length, but I don't think we, we filmed on that day. I think there's one wave that I guess. I was just trying to find yeah. some different types of waves. Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yours truly. There's, there's Ant. Oh, it's a, where's the start of that? Uh, that was the start. Sorry, it was filmed a bit late. There we go, there we go. So I was trying to, um, give commentary on the camera as I was going down through, uh, sort of, ex I was trying to explain at the time what it, the fears I was having, because this place was super, super, super clear, and this one was, was pretty shallow. Um, the footage was amazing. It's just that it's now at the bottom of the ocean, somewhere in the <laughs> Montawis. <laughs> okay, so th this is Brian, um, one of our friends. Oh, we've got a sneaky clip of somebody else rather than, rather than just me and you. We're throwing Brian under the bus here. So I think this is a good example of, of taking a board that just pushes you out onto the, onto the, onto the shoulder. Yeah, um, probably slightly lower rocker, a little bit longer. But um, if, if they're right aboard with more curve, the board would fit into this part of the wave that offers um, maybe like a lot more, sorry, a lot more sort of figure eights. But because they got sort of flat rocket boards, Brian's from the, the UK. Yep. Um, and yeah, they maybe tend to surf a bit more out of the shoulder and, and so on. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's see what other videos we've got here. Was, oh, was this, there was, there was one, there's one where just, I think we've already shown this one. Oh, look at so I'm surfing a five foot four, just, it's a, probably too small for the size of waves, but it was just yeah. fun. It was just such a fun place. It was, it was strange because, I mean, it, like, if, if you look at that, that's, that's, I mean, that's a good, that's, that's good size wave. Yeah. The, the, I felt so much more comfortable surfing this wave, even though it got really big towards the end, and knowing as well, so bef before we went out there and, and surfed it, Clay sort of explained about the break, how it takes off like that, and it will jack up on you. And then when you get past that bit, kick off the back because otherwise it just closes yeah. out then there's onto there's the reef. There's a section called Greedies, where basically if you try to get greedy in your last turn, it just dumps you on dry reef. And so even, even, even knowing all of that, I felt so much more comfortable on, 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 this, on this wave, on, on this right-hand wave, um, which, which kind of takes me to, to the point which I wanted to make around what I found really, I suppose, interesting in getting my head around surfing over the reef was I was surfing left-handers, which, which I'm not used to, surfing yeah. a wave that's way more powerful than I'm normally used to, and I was going over reef. So yeah. I, all of a sudden, I had all of these conditions suddenly changed on me. So I went out there with this intention, yeah, I was going to get barreled, yeah, I was going to do this, I was going to do that, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to be amazing by the end of it. That was what was going on inside my head. The reality of it was there was so many new factors put into me surfing that I got inside my own head and ended up surfing probably what I would say is worse than what I would do if I was here. So, so then I started going, well, this is, so I've just now spent three days traveling to get to this place and I'm now surfing the wave the way that I would surf the wave if I was, if I was back on the Gold Coast. And so then it kind of made me think, well, so, so then this is about, I kind of started to, to think about it. I ended up feeling not like I was wasting what were really good waves by just surfing them the same way that I would surf all the waves back here. There were so many new factors, so many new variables that it, it, it ended up making me surf really safe and, and not as well as I normally would. And so... The, th the interesting thing for me on that trip was I wanted to explore different parts of the wave. So I was, I was trying to go a little bit tighter, like 
um, every move I was trying to maybe get a bit more squarer. Like um, I'd do something, look at the footage, and then I'd challenge myself the next day to do better than the, the last day. Um, so I, I really was not intimidated by it at all, but mm. I've, I've done a couple of trips here before. Yeah. So um, you weren't alone. As, as the coach taking the group, there were a lot of people who mm. were uncomfortable. Yeah. And um, to a point where they wouldn't even paddle to yeah. the takeoff zone. They wanted to sit on the shoulder and try catch a softer, smaller one. Yeah. And that was their prerequisite. And not many of those waves actually came through for them. Mm. So it, it's really hard um, to explain to someone that, yeah, it is perfect. But when you're on the other side looking down, it's downright scary. Yeah. But when you don't focus on the fear and you look at the fun, suddenly the fear disappears. Yeah. And it's like, far out. Yeah. This is one of the best waves I've ever surfed in my life. So I suppose where about I'm going with that is if you are an intermediate surfer, then maybe you're doing your first ever surf trip in, in conditions like, like these, or, or, you, or maybe even not a surf trip. Maybe, maybe your mates at home have gone, right, we're going we're to go out surfing, we're going to surf this break, and it's a break you've never surfed before. It's over, it's over a reef which, which you've never surfed before. It's going to be amazing that day. It's, 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 just, ah. it's, it's a swell of, the, swell, of the, swell of the winter, or whatever it is, coming through. What can we do? Like, do you have anything that we can do to stop us getting inside our own heads so that yeah. we end up... Lower your expectations. And when you say lower you, your expectations, you did, what do you mean? You went to um, the wave pool, you only surfed backhand, you tried a backhand barrel, you jumped on the BOSI ball, and you had this vision. But isn't that the right thing to do, though? Like, train. Like, like if you're going to go and have a boxing match against a world champion, you're going you're gonna to go and train for it. And I felt like I was training for it. Well, it's, it's, it, it's a thing like someone talks up a restaurant. This is the best steak at this restaurant. And they talk it up and you get there and it's average. And then you go to a shitty little restaurant and you've got low expectations. It looks like you're going to get the worst meal. And they deliver it and it's just like, wow, did not expect mm. that. So when I do go on the trips, I almost try not get excited. And if the waves are there, if the waves arrive and they're good, I will surf until I can't surf anymore in case the next day it's not good. I, you, you do realise I, <laughs> I am not the kind of person that can't not get excited about something. Okay. Interesting. Um, so Bjorn's actually put... So Bjorn, uh, if, if you've been on from the very beginning, Bjorn came on, came on the trip. So Bjorn can give us first-hand experience here. Um, okay, so... Well, here's the interesting thing about coaching Bjorn. Um, the biggest surf tip that I gave Bjorn, that when I saw him actually click and started to really, really open mm. up and surf good, I told him to relax and do less. Yeah. That was my, my high performance, like surf coaching. It's like, Bjorn, just chill out, dude. That was pretty much relax. the everybody. Exactly. But when he did that, Vuon, I'd love to, if you just write down what happened and how much more you, you felt and how much more you started to enjoy your sessions when you did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. Dean, I had the same experience when going to the wave pool for the first time. I thought I'd be ripping. And I surfed worse <laughs> than I would <laughs> normally do. Yeah. Oh, the, I, I think the wave pool takes quite a few people down. I th yeah. I, I think your first few trips to the wave pool, it, it steals... It's, so, it, your, your ego comes, comes back like it's just been in the ring with Mike Tyson. <laughs> yes. Okay, so when the, my first time to the wave pool, I gave myself three goes to fall off. I said, wash off three waves. Like, don't care. Just, just get a feel for it. Like, get to understand it before you have an expectation um, and understand it. And when you understand it, try w with it. Don't fight it. Okay. So, so, so lower your expectations. I get that. But what then, if it comes down to the point of you have got somebody who's, who is so fearful of a particular part, maybe that is like, like me getting caught in the lip and thrown over and then hitting the reef. Maybe it's someone who's got a genuine, like, like this, this deep instilled fear that they don't want to be held under because they're worried about getting pinned down or their leg getting wrapped around the reef or something like that. 
how then, because that's not about expectations, that's now about a fear. So generally if you, okay, so I, I actually looked at um, mountain biking for this. Yep. Okay, and the guys who are doing the mountain biking say, if you're looking for a, a rock that's in your way or a branch that's in your way, you will find those the whole way down, things that could possibly hurt you and make you fall. Mm. However, if you focus on the path, you will follow the path the whole way down. Yeah. So if you're looking for things to hurt yourself, there's plentiful there. But if you're looking at the wave and the path that you should take, all right, you will stay on that path. So you, you can't focus on the fear. That's debilitating. It won't help you. Mm. But what you can do is sit next to confident people yeah. and, and rub up against that energy. And if they catch in best, better ways, you Quick can word catch better here. ways. Don't just go rubbing up against people in the water, especially if you don't know them. Well, something popped up on Facebook, not Facebook, what's it, um, on Instagram. And now, like every Instagram is a, like a motivational speaker. But there's one guy popped up and it actually makes sense. We're made up of 90% water. Yeah. All right. And we're electricity. So basically we... we two things don't go together. We vibrate at, at a frequency. And if you've got good energy, you definitely catch more waves yeah. and have more fun. And if you've got bad energy, it's almost like you can't even catch a wave. It's like they're resonating at two different energies. Yeah. So I feel that the people having the most fun are resonating at a better energy. And you need to sit in that group and try get that energy to calm you down and enjoy it. Yeah. I think one other thing there as, as well with, with the fear side of things. So, so what was really interesting for me on, on, the, on the trip was that a lot of it, a lot of people getting better in the water, it wasn't about teaching them necessarily a technique or anything like no. that. Most of it was all psychological. It was all mental. It was all that six inches between the two ears, that thing inside their head doing them a massive disservice. Go on. Well, having said that, so you would have watched me coaching a yep. lot of those people trying to get them to catch more waves. Mm. I teach them the Oreo biscuit technique and you would have seen it working there. Yeah. And it's a case of paddle less, sit in the right spot, glide into the wave, look where you want to go, take your time. And if you like what you see, catch the wave. Yeah. And the, as soon as people started gliding into waves, the fun just came back. They yeah. came back like, whoa, that was insane. Yeah. Get me another one. It's like, all right, calm down, just wait for it take your time and when people did that they did extremely well yeah and then you could almost see some other boats when they arrived the other people they were just panicking freaking out paddling for waves missing them going over the falls too deep and then i think those guys their fear would have escalated whereas the people that were, were calmer and actually yeah. reading the waves and and knowing what was going on that, that fear starts to dissipate and it starts to get overrun or taken over by fun. Yeah, Bjorn's put in his response. So how, how, did, how did Bjorn feel when, because so, so you told him to just, just relax and open up. Yeah. So feeling opened up, suddenly I started matching my turns to what the wave was doing. I became really patient. Man, did it feel <laughs> good. Listening to Ant's soothing voice before bed now every night in the hope to keep that relaxation and self-confidence that grew. So, that, so that's, uh, I'm assuming that, uh, unless you've got a private recording from me there, there you're, you're, you're referring to the Mind Surfer course, which we have uh, inside the program. Now, when, um, when I talked about the, the fear side of things, so I felt fear in the water, I've got enough tools under, under my tool belt to help, help me deal with it. Um, and one of those, so, but, but one of the big things is when we, when we feel fearful, our body will react in a certain way. There'll be, yes. like, you hold your body in a certain way when you feel fearful. And I think I talked about this on, on one of our Zoom coaching sessions the other night. And that is once, if I could feel that I was, that fear was starting to, like, starting to think about the reef, then I would, I would change my physiology. I would physically paddle somewhere different to change my physiology, to get myself out of my own head. Because the way that we, the way that we think affects how, how we use our body. But we can hack into that. So if we, if we use our body language differently, it's going to change how we feel. Yeah. And so I was doing that a lot in the water and then focusing on something completely different 
as, as, as well. There were a few ladies that we coached in the water. And by the way, I think the ladies really, really stepped it up. Um, I was just yeah. super proud with a lot of them. But um, I, I challenged them to do the opposite of what their brain was screaming at them. Mm. So if a set came through and they wanted to paddle wide, like paddle sort of to my right and away from the break, I'd challenge them paddle left and paddle to it. So they, they did that and suddenly they find themselves on the inside catching the perfect wave. Yeah. So the whole, that thing that you're talking about where um, the mob panics and all the sheep start to just move as like a, a, a panicked mob yeah. and they don't know why they're paddling. It's just, well, he's paddling, so I'm paddling. <laughs> and he thinks the way is coming, so I'm going to paddle harder. You, you need to act from the evidence that you see okay, yeah. and not react to the fear. So um, most of the times when... Like if they want to turn to the right and paddle away, I go turn to the left and paddle to it. Yeah. And it's totally against... Human what, nature. Yes. <laughs> okay. But it put them in the perfect place. Yeah. And when they, when they figured that part out, they started to like, ah, oh, because then they can notice all mm. the sheep just freaking out and the wolf just going straight to the wave and getting the set wave. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoyed... You 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 were saying about the Oreo the Oreo biscuit uh, just before. Let's see if we can let's see if we if, if we can actually did, did that the Oreo biscuit at the start. Ah oh, no, nah, not not quite well, enough it's from, it's the, it's from, the, from the paddling. I want to try and get one from the from the paddling. Um, I know that what about I, that big one? I, I know that I kick and paddle a lot on this one. Oh, no, didn't on that one there. There's one where I kicked and paddled a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, that big wave. Yeah. Let's try this. Let's try these ones here. Oh, that's no, too late. Yeah, not too late. Shall I find the Oreo for you? Yeah, I don't even think I paddle a lot for that. Uh, this was interesting. So we were talking about this wave before, and this was this was a wave directly after the the, the barrel one that we showed you earlier on. Exactly the same day. This was the I think it was the, the next wave that Clay went for. Bigger, bigger barrel. But you said that, that you looked in the wrong place. So we were talking earlier before the live started. Yeah, let me play it for you while you talk. And um, the first wave that I caught, I just, I wanted to get barreled. So I, I just went for the barrel. So can, can we go to the first wave? I actually want to show you something. So this was the, this was the yeah. actual barrel one. Okay, so I'm going to just okay. zoom in over here. So I'm paddling in, so. Oh, so, so, so there is the Oreo as well. So look, there's no kicking. Glide, there's the glide, chin up, and at that stage I'm looking for the barrel. So I'm, I'm already going, oh, okay, this is gonna barrel, I'm sweet. Yeah, you can see you there. Okay, but, but now watch this. Okay, so as I take off, I'm on my small A board, it's a five eight. Um, watch, see the nose catch there? It almost gets like illuminated. Oh, this is where the board does like a snake. So see that there? The nose is underwater. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna fall. And then I sat on the rail and I, I recovered. But you know what to do. Yeah, but, but, but wait. So I got barreled, got barreled, got barreled. Now that sensation where, oh, I nearly fell. If we go back to this wave here. No, no, it was, it was that one. Okay. So what I actually did now, this wave was probably a better wave. I saw it coming. Yeah. Okay. It's a monster. And I went, don't fall, because I nearly fell on the last one. Now, if I zoom in here, I took my eye off the line that I wanted to take, and I took my eye off the barrel, okay? Because in my head, I was worried about the drop. Yeah. So I made the drop, but I ruined the wave. There's the barrel, and it's pretty much going on without me. Bloody rookie. So I guess what I'm trying to say is a negative thought got into my head yeah. And um, if I had just looked for the barrel and gone for the barrel, I probably would have got barreled. Yeah. But because I went, oh, watch out, this, the last one is quite steep. I went, whoa, watch out the drop. And then I missed the barrel because yeah. I didn't look for the barrel. So I guess that's another way of saying that. Um, Pete loves a finger snap. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's in the other one, the finger snap. Let's, let's, play, let's play the finger snap in slow motion. Hang on, here we go. Slow motion finger snap. 
<laughs> I love that wave. It was fun. Now, you actually came out with very childlike energy after after you'd caught that wave. That you, it completely so, so, it was like something clicked inside your in, inside your head. I think you'd well, be waiting so many days to get it because it hadn't quite been barreling up until that point. Yeah. But you, <laughs> yeah. No, you've, got, you've got the. Look, I'm gonna put some headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah, that's, what, that's why I go on those trips, for those moments. It's just, it's priceless. Well, in saying that, what was potentially a good way for me, I think a lot of people caught some of the best waves of their lives. Oh, people were getting waves left, right and centre. It was, it was bonkers. Yeah. There was so many, like, that week was, I mean, look at that. That week was absolutely crazy. Yeah. So the, the reason why I was talking about the Oreo and I suppose a, a bit of takeaway value here, uh, for anyone who watches this, is we just, so, so we've talked about fear and how fear affects your body. Yeah. So if you're stress paddling into waves, if you're, so, okay, if you're not in position, you might have to paddle to get into position. But if you can learn to get yourself in the right position, which we call the bus stop in, in, in Ombi language, so get, so get yourself to the bus stop and then be able to glide into waves. So you're not stress paddling what's going to happen is you're going to be calmer right from the very outset. And we saw that on the trip. You had people that wanted to do turns and this and that, and blah, 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 do all these things. It's like, but if first of all, if, if you can do less to catch the waves, then all of a sudden it opens up a whole new, a whole new world for them yeah. because they're able to then relax on the waves. When, Not only from seeing it, from experiencing it firsthand myself as well. When people stress out, they almost do too much. And they don't know how to self-regulate or, or they don't know what to fix because there's too many moving parts. Yeah. But as soon as they do less, they start to feel the wave and then they react positively to the feeling. Yeah. Um, as opposed to not feeling it and just reacting negatively with stress. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people, they don't want to practice just sitting and catching a wave because they're worried that they're going to miss so many. So, they, so I think so many people never actually learn or, or, or understand how, how much easier it can be to catch a wave. Now, I think this is getting worse as well because it is getting busier and busier in the water. Ah. So, so we're now constantly fighting for waves with, with lots of other people. So, so, so that's something I wanted to say. Right. So if it's just you catching a wave, the Oreo biscuit is going to work great. Yeah. But if you're competing in a fight for a wave. Now you're, you're challenging another person. Then it's almost like the peacock feathers are coming out and you're gonna splash and, and you, you're trying to enforce your will over someone else to get a wave. Yeah. So then it's, then it's, like, a, it's like a competition. And the more spray you make, like the, the bigger you look and the gnarlier yeah. you look and stuff. So, th so that's, not got, that's got nothing to do with actually catching a wave. That's got to do with trying to take a wave off someone else. And then you're gonna need higher volume, um, stronger arms, jiu-jitsu, whatever <coughs> you need. <laughs> you need new arms, you can't even get your shoulders up, up here at the yeah, moment, Clay's got, Clay's got serious, <sighs> serious shoulder issues. Um, so, one other thing as well, which, which I wrote down here, and I wanna, I wanna circle back to it now, is that through the coaching, not necessarily just, just on this trip, but what, what we see from, from our groups online, from what I see with you coaching people out on the ramp, coaching people in the water, I, I think especially out on the ramp as well. You, you, we, like we go out onto the ramp, you give someone something to do, they do it, they do it about three times, they go, oh yeah, perfect, I've got it now, what's, what's the next thing? And I think that there is this huge hunger, there's this huge hunger for knowledge. What's next, what's next, how do I do this, how do I do that? But not a lot of people are actually putting in the practice. So everyone's becoming really knowledgeable about all this stuff, but they're not, they're not doing, it's, it's they're not actually putting this, this knowledge into, into, into practice. They're just on this quest for knowledge, which is useless. Yeah, it's kind of like they want, they want to shovel more food into their mouth, but they're not chewing, digesting, yeah. and then using it to, to sustain mm. them. It's, it's just like, tell me this, and then they get, oh, wow, tell me that, tell me that. And then they, they almost take on too much information, and then they can't even do the first thing that you told them. Yeah. So I found that when I was coaching, I, I have to deliver less. 
Yeah. Like I, I almost got to tell in water coaching, I have to really dial it back. Yeah. It seems counterintuitive. You think if I know more, then I'll learn faster. No. It's, it's, if you just get can just this one thing, just get this one thing right, and it actually speeds up the process. And we saw it at it's Macca's. It's a stepping stone. It's yeah. just like you get that right, you, you get a step up for the next one. Yeah, because it's, it just opens up so many doors. So, so what, I suppose the point I'm trying to make here is that don't be in a hurry to be really good at everything. Instead, get really good at the fundamentals because then all those extra little bits become so much yeah they'll serve you they well. become so much easier and i think that that my surfing journey obviously since i've been with ombi having to undo all of the bad mistakes all, 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 all of the rushing that i had done for 20 years whatever it was while i was learning to to surf badly i'm now trying to undo all that whereas if the, i've learned more in the last two and a half, three years about surfing than I did in 20 years of me rushing. And that's because I've slowed everything down and gone back to basics. If this is the last thing that we say tonight on the live, yep. it, it's going to be this, right? A lot of people have risk aversion. Yep. Okay? Whereby as we get older, we take less risks, which is a huge problem, and especially in surfing. And then they sit at home behind the desk and they think, wow, if I go to macaronis and get that wave, I will rip because the wave's perfect. Yeah. But what happens, you end up getting that wave, you shit yourself, and you take zero risk, and you go in a straight line from the beginning, 200 meters to the end of the wave, and you've done zero. Mm. So I suppose if you want to get good at surfing, go surf the onshore days, because it yeah. doesn't matter if you fall off. No one's watching you because it's onshore. Um, and you can fall off as much as you want and it's not going to hurt you. It's yeah. not, not going to like, but if you fall off a perfect wave, you, you feel like you, you, I don't know, there's a sense of loss. Mm. You feel off a bad, fall off a bad wave, like you, it, it's not going to profoundly have an impact on you. But mess up the wave of the day and you're just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, what have I done? You know, I suck at surfing. It's just a wave. Yeah. Quick couple of comments, and then we'll uh, then, we'll, then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll wrap up for tonight. We are going to try and keep these these down to about an about an hour. I thought they were good. Uh, I'm getting started in surfing at the age of 40 and loving your content. Sadly, I don't have many waves here in the Mediterranean, but already got a surf skate and a nice skate park to practice. Nice surf skating is is well, very I, I, powerful. I so. surfed. I went to um, Israel a while back and actually scored it good. Did you? There's a reef break out there that I surfed and um, even got barreled. So yeah. There are waves, you just have to know when and where. So. 39 years old, started six months ago in Bali, and 90% of what I'm doing out of the water is ombi related. Yes. So, so let me just bring this back up Fan again for fantastic you. Fantastic day. If, if, if you haven't signed up yet, then we've got the full online program there. You can get a seven day free trial. Go in there, check it out, see if you like it. I can guarantee that you will. Look at all the different exercises, the, so, the pathways that we've got. But uh, ombi.co, just type that in, and then you get seven days free access. Yep. Big, big um, what does David say about human? Because um, I'm a David Huberman, Huberman fan. I consume so much of his stuff. Yeah, that's the broadcast. Humans, an SDR breathing technique, which starts from around the time I leave my house. What is N? So an SDR, I, I've, I've watched a lot of Huberman stuff as well. Not 100% sure exactly what the NSDR breathing technique is. I, you're trying to save yourself having to type. But in doing that, I don't, know, I don't know which one you're talking like, about. Oh. But, so his, his physiological sighs are really helpful um, for, for, for when you're feeling stressed out in the water, which um, just, if you type in physiological sigh, Andrew Huberman, that will come up on YouTube. But it's, in essence, it's a breath in through the nose and then an extra one. So it's, and then breathe out. And as you breathe out, just allow your body to relax. I found that a, a really handy tool when I'm out in the, in, in the lineup. I'll do two or three of those. It has a really good calming effect. The studies around it are that they found that that's one of the fastest breath techniques you can use to calm yourself down. Cool. Um, there was... Corin, non-sleep... It's a mindfulness oh, technique. Oh, non-sleep deep breathing. Oh, okay, yep. Cool. Yep. Non-sleep, deep rest. Non-sleep, deep rest. Yes. Yes. So the non-sleep, deep rest, Andrew Human talks about that, and that's where the learning happens. So, so yeah. we're, we're going to go off on another it's tangent. Like, it's here. like a meditation, meditative. So basically, 
when you've learned something like a, a skill or something, you, you kind of want to have that to download it into your, your brain, yeah, into the, the mainframe. And uh, so, in any live that we do, we'll always get one board question, so we will, we will answer this one this one board question. From Owen, what type of board would you recommend for a wave like this? I have a lot of similar waves where I am, just a bigger short board with a round tail. So a wave like this would have been, I'm, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume, Owen, well, well let, let, let's do the two. We've got macaronis, the left hander that, that, that we showed you, where it, there's a barrel section and a turn section. Round tail? So if you're an average surfer, you want a board that's going to help you. So in other words, you want to be able to get in earlier, so something slightly longer with more rocker to fit into the wave. And then um, probably a round tail where you can handle the sucky pot and turn easier. Yeah. On that barrel that I had, I took out my small wave board. Yeah, but you're... Because it was a challenge. But you're a really good surfer. So, so you can pretty much ride any board and you, and you, and you, you do all right on it. We're talking about probably yes. people of that intermediate to... So lower intermediate to maybe intermediate, higher, higher intermediate standard. I mean, uh, even on the rights, I rode a 5.4 most of the trip. Or actually yeah. all the trip on the right, yeah. But then on, on that right-hander, I had more fun on, on my... 6.10. On my 6.10 mid-length. However, so you've, you've, you've said that you ride small boards just because you're really good at surfing. If, Owen, if you're that sort of average surfer, the sort of standard that I'm at, I rode my, my, my squash tail on the first day and straight away I changed that and then I rode a round tail for all of the rest of the time on those waves because there was enough power in the waves where I didn't need the squash tail to give me the drive. The round tail allowed me to do those really nice turns and when, I, when we were on the right-hander and I had the mid-length, really big, long, wrapping turns. So I'd say from, from intermediate, if, if the waves got the power, I would go round tail. So on your round tail was an inch longer, maybe one litre more. Yep. But that round tail and the inch longer mean, meant you got into waves earlier and that you had the control. Yeah. And I think having that control over the energy in the way is super important. Yeah. So Owen, hopefully that, uh, that answered your, your question. We are going to, we are going to, uh, we're going to sign off at that point there. We'll be back again when Clay gets back from Nicaragua. We'll have some more footage. Um, I, I enjoyed this. We've got to do it again. So yeah. We, we, there's we so much I actually want to talk about. We had to like... So one thing that I would like to talk about, in actual fact, let, let me know in the comments here. We haven't covered it tonight. I've had a conversation with Clay while, while we were away, that there are so many different... So when it comes to coaching people to help them progress their surfing, now whether you're for or against wave, wave pools, just throw that out the window for a minute. I see a huge amount of value in wave pools in that there are a lot of the variables, the things that were freaking me out when I went to, to Macaroni's, in the wave pool, you've got a wave that's always going to be exactly the same. So you get to choose your settings. You've got a wave that's going to be the same size, be the same direction. It's always going to appear in exactly the same place, which means that you then get to focus purely on getting your technique right. So I feel that there's a huge value in, in using wave pools for, for, for coaching people in surfing. And I think that it's, it's, it's going to be a really fast pathway so that when you then go on your trip, to these places, you've when those variables do come into it, you're going to have a lot more confidence around yeah. it. So I would really like to have that discussion. It sounds like you had a fabulous, great tip. See you soon, Clayton. Uh, Corin, yes. So Corin is actually heading over to Nicaragua. Yeah, Corin, we, we got a live tomorrow at eleven. If you, I'm, I'm not too sure, but so that that so just if you are watching this and you're thinking I'll jump on that there, that's just for the people that are travelling to Nicaragua. Um, thanks, guys. Love your content. Uh, nobody wants the wave pool thing, clearly. No one's, no one's <laughs> commented on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was something interesting which, which came up. So yeah, anyway, that is it, guys. We will do the next live when Clay comes back from, from Nicaragua. We are going to make these um, regular again. Won't be every single week. It'll probably be round about every other week, depending upon when Clay's away. Because Clay's got a few trips coming up. There's so much learning that we're doing that I feel that we need to kind of get it out. Like when we get concepts, like the, when you first got into flow ropes. Yeah. Like I, I want everyone to use flow ropes. I had a guy today that <laughs> couldn't do a turn. I made him flow rope and straight away he could turn. Yeah. And it's, it's pattern recognition and it's, it's, an, it's a marvellous tool. And it's, 
it's yeah. Anyway, the it, there are more. It is again. it is a marvelous tool, and so is going live a marvelous tool because if we don't go live, then unfortunately somebody in the office has to listen to Clay. <laughs> Just yeah, unraveling. It's just, it's, it's, just this, it's just barrage of stuff just comes out of his mouth and we're like, no, stop talking. Just, just get on alive and tell everybody about it. So, so yes, we'll, um, we, we, we're going to use these as a, as a, as a way for, for Clay to just download uh, all, all of this information. I'll try and make sense of it as we go through the process. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully you guys get some gold nuggets out of it. Anyway, that is it. We are actually officially going now. See you guys. Okay. Good night. Toodle, Thank toodle you. pip. Whatever you want to say. Bye.